before I proceed to give the welcome letter. Under Article 4.5 of the GBA Constitution, that is the business of Congress, Congress shall, amongst others, one, review the past work of the Executive Board. Two, receive the reports of the Executive Board and committees. Three, receive the financial statement of the Executive Board for the preceding year. Four, receive and approve the audited accounts of the authority. And five, adopt resolutions and amendments to the Constitution, rules and regulations of the authority, and elect officers and other members of the Executive Board. Even though we chalked relative successes in quite a number of endeavors, we equally encountered challenges, some of which were admittedly, we were admittedly unable to surmount despite our best efforts. These recurrent challenges, which are pivotal to the growth and development of professional boxing, must be addressed if professional boxing is to make any headway in the immediate future. It is for this reason that I intend to highlight them for meaningful deliberations on the floor of Congress. One, funding for the sport. This issue has always constituted the foremost of the challenges confronting our administration. And predictably, it impacted negatively all aspects of programs during the period on the review. Given the recurrent and all too familiar no money syndrome refrain coming from government, KETSI, the Ministry of Youth and Sports, as well as the National Sports Authority, the board found itself severely handicapped in the planning and execution of its well intentioned programs. The situation is not helped by the perennial government pro Black Stars bias, which continues unabated despite denials from the seat of government and the repeated assurances given by sports minister after sports minister to the effect that government is committed to fund and develop all sporting disciplines in equal measure. The recent breakfast meeting, chaired by no less a personality that is excellency the president, to source funding from corporate bodies solely for the black stars to the exclusion of all other sporting disciplines at a time when our amateur contingents were pleading for funds to aid their preparations for the Tokyo Olympic Games left much to be desired. We do recall that four years ago, in or about April 2017, the then new Minister for Youth and Sports, Honorable Isaac Isiema, inaugurated amidst a lot of publicity a national trust fund for sports to generate funding for the various sporting federations. The caliber of persons appointed to constitute that body left no one in any doubt that the funding menace, which has plagued sports in Ghana for years, would soon be a thing of the past. Sadly, four years on, it appears that this much heralded national trust fund for sports has not taken off and is yet to see the light of day. And it is, in all probability, likely to suffer the fate of previous well-meaning schemes. Lack of sponsorship. As an offshoot of the perennial problem of funding, lack of sponsorship has always been the bane of the sport. We had elaborate plans, as has always been the case amongst others, to reintroduce the boxing league, organize periodic seminars for our boxing trainers and ring officials to upgrade the knowledge of current trends and ensure the certification of their licenses. We received countless assurances from potential sponsors, most of whom, as usual, were more disposed to sponsoring soccer-related events for parochial reasons. Faced with this daunting challenge, the board sought the assistance of a renowned consulting firm known for its success rate in sourcing for sponsorships. Unfortunately, the initial commitment charges were far in excess of our means, and the entire project had to be put on hold. Fortunately for us, we engaged one of our revered past presidents, Mr. Moses Hua Mwenin, himself a consultant, in discussions on the issue, and he graciously consented to prepare a strategic plan for free for the GBA. 
This move proved in the short term to be the panacea to our sponsorship headings. Thankfully, through Mr. Moses Poor Minister's instrumentality, we received some modest but appreciable sponsorship from the Ghana National Petroleum Corporation, GMPC, the Agricultural Development Bank, ADB, and the Ghana Gas Oil Company. And this enabled us to reintroduce the boxing league which have gone dormant for years under the caption Bukum Fist of Fury. The Bukum Fist of Fury tournaments have proved very successful in unearthing scores of talented young fighters in the semi professional, amateur, juvenile, and female boxing ranks. And I dare say that had it not been for the intervention of the COVID 19 pandemic, a lot of inroads and substantial progress would have been made at this point. The GBA is extremely grateful to Mr. Moses Kuwamani, the Chief Executive Officers and Board Chairman of GMPC, ADB and Garagas, for their sponsorship packages and timely responses to our request for sponsorship. We pray that other prospective sponsors will emulate the example. Offices for the Secretary. The GBA has come a long way from the era of operating from makeshift premises and temporary office space to a permanent visible secretariat thanks to the benevolence of the Trust Force and Bureau Limited, whom we engaged in discussing our plight not long after we commenced our second term. Meshes Kovna Dapa and Bobby Adom Yeboa, to whom we owe a huge debt of gratitude, were very instrumental in putting forward our case the company's board of directors, and true to their word, they succeeded in allocating some of his space for the GBA in those premises where this annual delegates conference is currently taking place. Uh, I wish to mention that in addition to providing the office space, they gave us this hall to organize this conference for free. Let's see a picture. We are extremely grateful for that. I must mention that even though the initial proposal was for the GPA to pay rent for its use of the office space, the issue of the rent payment has been shelved since then. And it is my fervent prayer that as long as we remain law-abiding occupants, that issue will be conveniently forgotten. <laughs> the office basically to serve the needs of our licensees. And we hope that whatever expansion and outstanding works remain undone will be taken up and completed by the incoming administration. You, you all know that will agree with me that the two gentlemen sitting on my left and right who are seeking to take over the mantle are very well resourced gentlemen. So we are sure that when they come into office, we will not be lacking in that respect. Yay. Rampant ministerial changes. Our ATS tenure has seen as many as six force ministers, notably Honorable Elvis Afri Yankra, Mahama Yariga, Dr. Ahmed, Neil Antipanapoy, Isaac Isiyama and Lindley, Honorable Mustafa Yusif. The man we mentioned though that Honorable Adjikisiya must serve a much longer tenure than the others combined. These rampant changes have not occurred well for any meaningful plan. As has always been the case, plans that the various ministers have unveiled following discussions with the executive board to improve and enhance the fortune of the sport each time they come into office have predictably been shelved each time a new face took over. It is our hope and expectation that this trend will cease so as to generate much more confidence for stakeholders of the sport in central government. GBA committees. On the 9th day of May 2013, the GBA, in furtherance of Article 411 of the Constitution, inaugurated various committees, spelling out their respective duties. Among these were promotions, ratings, Disciplinaries for arbitration, marketing for sponsorship, welfare, finance,
technical, legal, medical, and appeal committees. At the inception of our second term, we again inaugurated and appointed members of the set committees as well as subcommittees. Unfortunately, most of the committees and subcommittees have been totally inactive due to some of the obvious constraints cited above that the GPA has had to grapple with. Except for the promotions, ratings, and the discouraged to arbitration committees, the rest of the committees have been still born right from their inception. Given the experience we have had, it will, in my humble estimation, be prudent for the incoming executive to scale down the number of committees and make those that are retained more relevant to our purposes. As a way of motivating the membership of these committees, it is proposed that sitting allowances, however small, be paid across board to them. Boxes exploits. Our second tenure witnessed a significant rise in the number and quality of promotions. Additionally, some of our young talents won meaningful intercontinental titles and made their way up the ratings of the various world boxing sanctioning bodies. The biggest of these feats were chalked by Isaac Bezestom Dobe and Richard Azonto Kome when they won the WPU and IPF titles respectively world titles respectively. Unfortunately, they both lost their titles after mandatory defenses and have, even though bounced back into the upper echelons of the ratings, hoping to get shots at their respective title division holders in the course of this year. Emmanuel Game Boy Table, who had annexed the IBO lightweight title for the start of our second term, is also waiting on the sidelines for world title shots either the WPE or the WPO divisions. Currently, our brightest prospects for world titles are Jesse Manuel Blanche, Wasir Mohammed, Joshua Wahab, Lu Asheum, Michael Ansah, and up and coming youngsters like Alfred Nabdi. The period of the review also witnessed abysmal performances from some of our champions, the likes of Rafa Mensa, Habib Ahmed, Maxwell Oku, Patrick Aluti, and Duke Micah, who made heavy weather of their shots at world titles in their respective weight divisions. Their losses also highlighted the need for our boxers to engage in more competitive fights at home and not concentrate on building up impressive fight records with mediocre opponents. The GPA was, on a more humane note, called upon to financially assist some retired and destitute boxes whose plight could not be ignored. Notable among those who benefited from our years were former national champions King George Edu, who had sergeant in the US for over 40 years, Gali Kujo, Simon Peter McIntosh, and Abraham Jaffa, also known as Adam Bo. Amendments. With time, it has become necessary to effect amendments to our green book to conform with the new trends and developments in the sport. We are happy to announce that the proposed amendments to our rules book, which were tabled, have been effected, and the newly amended printed versions of our rules book will be out on sale at token prices to all licensees so that we can all be abreast with the rules in these times. On this particular project, we are exceedingly grateful to our one and only long-standing retired referee judge, Mr. Jonathan Hansana, for his input in effecting these amendments. Let's give Mr. J. a round of applause. Thank you very much, Jay. On the discipline and arbitration fronts, we have had to crack the whip to discipline errant licensees, some of whom 
receive suspension sentences. Bereavements. Any summary of the period? Thirteen, 
77 volts. So in this sense, Michael Nikwe elected Shadak elected Lawrence Karaloko elected and then Alani Tofik elected. The following positions are all opposed. So therefore they are also elected. We have uh, So ladies and gentlemen, the outgoing executive will congratulate the new executive. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause for Mr. Henry Manley Spain, a great school of sportsmanship. Shall we do a big round of applause for him, ladies and gentlemen? Put your hands together, ladies and gentlemen. This year, and we are going to work closely. Uh, I'll be consulting him. I know he will be part of the board. Yes. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, uh, we are. We are happy today. At least everybody can be a witness to the congress. It has been a peaceful one, and uh, it's a credit to Ghana Boxing Authority, and that that shows the beginning of good things that is going to happen. Uh, let me also. Thank once again, Lawyer Peter Swenis. He did it all. Thank you. I do not have any choice but to accept, accept the, the results. I think what I told them, what I assured them, they weren't content with it. And it is somehow not that bad for me because actually this is a sport that I love but I think this time around I'm going to step back for a while and see how things are going to turn out and if there's any advice that anyone needs from me I'll be there to advise them. So thank you each and every one of you and I wish you all good luck. 